Hello everybody. In this video we're going to go over a very important concept in 3D and that is hierarchies. In a previous video I showed you how to use groups. Groups are a type of hierarchy in Maya. To demonstrate this I will create five polygon primitives. A sphere, a cube, cylinder, cone, and torus. Remember that another way to look at your scene is to open up the outliner. Rather than a visual representation of our scene, the outliner provides us a list of our objects. As you can see, I can select each one of the objects in the outliner. Using my select tool, I am going to marquee select all of the objects in my scene. And then I will go to edit group. This creates a very simple hierarchy. It simply creates a group with all my objects nested underneath it. And to see that, I can click on the plus symbol to the left of the group. This will expand the group. Notice how I can still individually select each of the objects. However, if I select the group and move it, everything nested underneath it will move along with it. But if I select the individual objects nested in the group, I can still move them independently. Remember that selecting the group and translating will move everything with it. But besides translation, I can also rotate and scale. In fact, I can also do non-uniform scales and everything nested underneath will be affected. If I wish to ungroup the objects, I can select the group and go to Edit Ungroup. And you will see the result in the outliner. We'll now dive a little more deeply into hierarchies. I'm going to select my torus, and then I'm going to hold down shift and select the cone. The order that I select these objects is very important. I'm selecting the child first and its parent second. And with my two objects selected, I will now go to Edit Parent. And if we look in our outliner, you'll see something very similar to the grouping we looked at earlier. You'll see that the torus is nested underneath the cone. Therefore, if I move the cone, the torus will move with it. But if I move the torus, it can move independently. The torus is a child of the cone. In fact, you'll notice in the outliner that the torus is not only underneath the cone, but it is also indented. I will now make the cone a child of the cylinder. I've selected the cone, shift selected the cylinder, I'm going to edit parent. Take note that P is the hotkey for this operation. Now, if I move the cylinder, everything nested underneath it moves. If I move the cone, the torus moves along with it. But if I move the torus, it moves independently. That is because it is at the bottom of the hierarchy. I will now select the cylinder and then shift select the cube. This time, I'll use the P hotkey. And finally, I'll make the cube a child of the sphere. If I wish to see everything nested underneath the sphere in my outliner, I can hold down shift and click on the plus symbol to the left of the sphere in the outliner. And as you can see in the outliner, everything is neatly nested and indented. The outliner provides us with 
a clear picture of the hierarchy of our objects in our scene. I'll test my hierarchy by rotating the sphere. scaling it, and non-uniform scaling. Now I'll pick the cube and try rotating it, scaling it, the cylinder, the cone, and the torus. If I want to break the hierarchy or unparent the objects, I can select them and go to Edit Unparent. Notice in my outliner now that the objects are no longer nested underneath one another. And now they all move independently of one another. I can also create hierarchies in the outliner itself. What I'm going to do is middle mouse drag the torus into the cone. I'll middle mouse drag the cone into the cylinder, middle mouse drag the cylinder into the cube, and finally I'll drag the cube into the sphere. I now have a hierarchy identical to what we had before. This is simply another way of creating hierarchies. Notice that I can also break the connections in the outliner by middle mouse dragging objects outside of the hierarchy. And of course I can create different hierarchies. This time I'm going to make the cylinder be the top of the hierarchy, the top of the chain. Notice how the objects are now ordered differently in the outliner. And if I move the cylinder, everything moves with it. However, if I move the cube, only the sphere moves with it. And if I move the cone, only the torus moves along with it. Let's look at a couple more things that are important to understand when working with hierarchies. And to do so, I'm going to create a cone. I'm going to scale it non-uniformly. I'm going to enable Snap to Grid to get the placement exact, and I'll duplicate this cone four times. The cone at the bottom is going to be the top of the hierarchy. Each one of the cones will be pointing to its child. So to create the hierarchy, I'll select the child, then the parent, and type P. And I'll just consecutively go down the chain, creating my hierarchy. And now that I've created it, I'll take a look in the outliner. Everything looks good. I will quickly test it. Notice I forgot to turn off Snap to Grid. Not a big deal. I'll just turn it off now. So far, so good. It moves well, and rotation seems to work just fine as well. However, when I select the second cone in the chain, or the third, fourth, or fifth cones, when I rotate them, they end up getting skewed. This is a problem. So what's happening here? Let's take a look at this. I'm going to select the cone at the base, and we're going to take a look at its scale information. Remember that I scaled my cone on the y-axis. This is what's creating that strange behavior on the cones further down the hierarchy. It's very easy to fix this problem. I will select the base of my hierarchy and go to Modify Freeze Transformations. 
Notice that freezing transformations sets the scale x, y, and z in the channel box back to the default value of 1. And now if I select the different cones in my hierarchy, they rotate appropriately. I do not get that skewing effect. Also note that if I select all of my cones, I can rotate them all at once. This is a very different behavior than if I just select the base and rotate it. There's still a problem, however. Let's take a look at the top cone. What I want you to notice is where the pivot point is. Currently, this cone rotates from its center. If I press the Insert key on my keyboard, or the D key, I can move my object's pivot, in other words, the point from which it rotates. When done moving the pivot point, press D or insert again to exit. Notice that I can put the pivot anywhere in 3D space that I want. If I place the pivot at the point of the cone, I can rotate it as if it were a bell. For this example, I want to move the pivot to the base of the cone. I'm going to use my Snap to Grid tool once again to get the placement exactly where I want it. I'm going to move the pivot for all the cones in my hierarchy. Be careful when moving the pivots of your objects. I suggest, after you press Insert or the D key to change it to this uh, Move Pivot Manipulator, that you grab the arrows, not the rotator. Notice that I'm grabbing the green arrow, or the Y translate arrow, when moving my pivots. And of course, when you're done, don't forget to press D or insert again to exit the move pivot mode. Now when I test the individual cones, they rotate from exactly the point that I want them to. And don't forget that you can rotate the objects individually or you can select them all and rotate them at once, as I am doing here. And of course we can rotate them in all three axes. This is a very simple hierarchy because it's like a chain. There's nothing branching off of it. We can, of course, create much more complicated hierarchies. To demonstrate this, I'm going to simply duplicate these cones to create some branching chains. And if we look at the hierarchy in the outliner, you'll see it is now much more complex. I'm going to increase the complexity of it further by selecting the whole hierarchy and duplicating it, and making that duplicate hierarchy a child of one of the cones of my original hierarchy. And again, I'm doing this simply through parenting. With the child selected, I'll select its parent by holding down Shift, and I'll type P to complete the hierarchy. I'll take one more look at the hierarchy in the outliner. As you can see, there are a lot of objects in it. And I'll select one of the cones at the bottom of my hierarchy and work my way up the chain. Hierarchies are important in Maya for organizing your scenes, as well as for animation. In my next video, we'll look at a practical use of hierarchies. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.